This is Mastering Mathematics with your teacher, Karen Weston. Hello, Antigua Barbuda. Welcome again to another new series, Mastering Mathematics. It's a program produced by the Ministry of Education in conjunction with its EBU unit, Center for Mathematics Education, and ABS Television. Of course, we are determined to make certain that mathematics not only becomes a dose experience, but it is a part of you. You know what you're doing and you can manfully say, yes, mathematics shall not be a devil for me again. This time, we're not going to talk plenty because guess what? Yes, the exams are around the corner and aunties, grannies, uncles, Get, I am going to challenge you that next year you're going to compete with your daughters to make certain that you can also sit that exam. What did I say? Age is just a number. And you are seeing suddenly that the mathematical concepts are things that you can handle. Today, we want to run off our topic where we're talking about our decimals, bring you into significant numbers, and talk a little about standard form. This is the beginning of your question number one, because we will be working the examination papers too, because reformers, you have now got to prove yourselves. Okay, we have the technology, and on these, these are not just toys. We can look right away, we can get on to it, okay, and we can clamp to anything. You can go into your Google masteringmathematics.com and right away we can go to any of the pages and you can get the topics coming on here, all right? Because we have Mastering Mathematics not only just on Facebook, not only just on YouTube, but it is also on Facebook. So this will bring everything to you. And that is why we have a flyer here that tells the entire public that we have, you can watch the program on ABS television on Tuesdays and Mondays and Saturday mornings. Tuesday and Mondays, 6.30, Saturday morning is around 9.30, And uh, again, facebook.com, youtube.com, master it forward slash master in mathematics, and you will get the program and hear me write the teaching too. Apart from that, no, you don't want to say, I wish I had some examination papers to work with, because you can go to masteringmathematics.info and you can get your past papers there. Also, the website for CXC, and you can also get your past papers there, so that we have taken learning from inside the classroom, making it an informal situation, and anywhere you are, you can be your own facilitator because remember we say we are constructors and teachers now are only facilitating the process all right so here we are and then that is to say teachers we don't leave them right away to say okay you can go to these websites you have so many things available to you you have your textbooks etc they also need a human voice they also need a human voice. So once you would have explained something to them, it is then they can go on their own. So just don't say, well, they have so many sites available to them. They still need this human voice. All right, so be prepared to be a facilitator for them. Today, we're going to look quickly at our division of decimal numbers. Remember, we said this is where, yes, so I left it on my blackboard so I would know, but not blackboard, we have changed, we're in the new technological era, we have our whiteboard, all right, and so I've left it right here so that we can know where we started, and we're going to be dealing with um, telling you how you do your, your division. Division, you'll notice the operations are the same. But because we have a point in the number, what do we have to do? Alignment comes into it. Format, how do we present it, is important. Okay? So then, if we start in with division of this number, and the number here is 
2.2, and it is, we're going to write it as how children are accustomed to say, divided by 2. It's still the same format, and that is why I'm writing it that way. So we can be saying 2 into 5, it would be 2. And even if you're going here, and you're going here, and then you have a 0, and then you're bringing down your 2, and you have your 1, we're not going to say you're putting a point, you're putting this here, okay? We're just going to say 2 into 5 goes 2. Then you would put your point up here, and the one that goes here now from our subtraction, we will now be saying 2 into 12, okay? So we will even not even be looking at the decimal point at the time, but looking and saying, 2 into 12 and that is going to give us 6. When we're doing our division in terms of our numbers 2 into 5 and you have your 2 where you have your decimal point it goes right up to in the answer here and then we treat this number as if it was just an ordinary whole number so we are saying 2 into 12 okay and then we'll be saying that and so we're getting our 0 0 okay and that is what we are talking about here so our division stays the same if you didn't do it in that format and you had 5.2 and you had it divided and you had it in this way we are saying divided by 2 because you know students like to say 22 goes once 25 goes two times put your point take your one here and you're going 2 into 12 and you get your 6 and that is all we're doing in terms of division Okay, now suppose we had this number where we had that it was 30, it would have been 3.2 and it is divided by 0 0.2. 3.2 and it is divided by 0 0.2. What is the rule here? Okay. And again, let us take the other things from off the board so that people don't say, oh, we're confused because the board is crowded and we don't know where to look. All right. So here we are. So you have this where you have 3.2 and it is divided by 0 0.2. Can you write it out? Oh, big 3.2 divided by 0 0.2. So if it is written in this form, what we say, you have two numbers, two parts, numerator with your denominator. What we try to do every time is to make certain that the denominator is always a whole number. The denominator is always a whole number. So sometimes we may have to increase or decrease our positions in terms of making this a reality. Let us look here and whatever, how many places we're talking about moving the decimal point in the denominator, we have to do the same when it comes to the numerator. So that we're looking, how many decimal places do we have here? How are we going to get it into a whole number? All right. And you would say, oh, we have to move one position to my right here so that I would have to move it one like that. OK. And if I do this, I would have to do the same thing up here, too. OK. In the same direction. How many places? How many places? OK. So we have to decrease by 10. And this is what we're doing. So it will now be so that we can now rewrite that number as it's equal now to 3, 2, which is 32 over 2. Okay, look at that again. Here we had 0 0.2 and we wanted to take it into a whole number. So we had to go into our, our hundredth position. So we were moving one place to the right. And up here, we had to do the same sort of increase, okay, 
to get that back to happen. And so what we did now was to change it over so that we are increasing by, by 10, okay? We are increasing both numerator and denominator by 10. So it will be multiplied by 10. That's what we did, okay? And then, so when you're saying you're moving one decimal place, so and we're going one decimal place to the right, and then so we ended up one over, one over. Same position, same amount of movement, okay? And then it's easy now with our whole number that you're going two into three goes once and one, two into 12 would be six time. And we would be getting 16 for our answer. So that what we are calling the divisor, okay, that is the one that's going to dictate how many places we're going to move the decimal point. Now, let us look and see what would happen if we had um, another fraction like that one so that we can show you um, in terms of division that the amount of places that we have to move these things would depend on the numbers in the denominator okay now suppose we had this okay let us look here again and see and we're dealing with small numbers because what we want you to get is the concept the idea how to do it and if we're going to be teaching you how to do something like that we're not going to be using large numbers okay so I'm going to be using these two examples, 7.7, .7, and it is over 1.1. In contrast to my saying, I want to find the answer for 0 0.88, and it is over, again, 1.1. Okay, and we'll end up with this last one here for our division to make you see that we can have 4.618 divided by 0 0.24. Okay, so those are our division. And we're going to use over here as our work site to show you how this is done. All right, so let us take off this, take away this, and get a clean board so that you can see unhindered okay so if I have 7.7 .7, so it is 7.7 .7 and it's divided by 1.1 what is the first thing we have to do yes we have to say how many places we must move that decimal okay are we increasing or we're going to be decreasing because the denominator has to be a whole number and so we are increasing okay one position so watch us um, let's use the reddit pen so you're going to my right okay one place here so what do we have to do here the same thing yes one place what is the number we're ending up with now it will now be 77 over 11 and even our little students we will close our eyes and say 11 into 77 or we can ask them, 11 times what would give us 77? And I can hear them screaming at me because they have been learning those tables, all right? And the answer here is now equal just to 7. So again, it's a movement of places, okay? Then, we, um, again, so that is taken in. Just look at it and see because you can just eyeball and see what's happening. Your denominator, one decimal place, so we can move it one place to your to my right here, and you do the same thing up here, and then we end up with the number now, 77 over 11, and then it's just 11 into 77 goes seven times. Let us look at this one, okay? And here we have, and it is now, zero point eight eight and it is over one point one okay so what are we going to do this time okay so which part of the number are we going to look at 
to dictate which movements that we should make. And again, we are down in our denominator, okay? And we have, again, we are increasing by 10, again, times. And here, you see here? So what did I do? Right. So no, your idea is not to say you just want to get rid of the decimal point. You have to pay attention. How many places did I move in the denominator? One. So why, so can I move it two places in the numerator? No, all right? It has to be one. That's right, so you bring back your little curve and it comes just one. Not because you have another place to go. It's not the amount of numbers, it's how many places you have moved it in your denominator that would dictate how many places you're going to move that decimal point in your numerator and in what position. All right, so that is what we did a while ago. And then, so it's easy now to write, and you can write your 0 0.8, .8 and it's over 11. So what am I saying? Does not matter if the number in the numerator still has a decimal point, but it does matter if we're doing our numbers in the denominator, okay? Of course, if you're doing your calculator, well, nothing matters because as long as you can punch in those numbers correctly, you will get your answer. So you don't have to be thinking about changing. The calculator does that for you. And students in the fifth form, you don't waste time to say you have to put in all these little side steps. You can go straight away, make certain you know how your calculator operates, and just punch in your numbers and you get your answer immediately. All right? We're taking our time because we're teaching the technique and what is involved and how it is done. When you get to your scientific and you have your calculators now, you go straight and you use your keys because at any time, somebody can stop you and ask you, could you please show me how it is that I'm getting this answer? And that is what we always have to do. You can say you're in a technological error and people would say, oh, the calculator will do it for you. No, those things break down very fast too. So you have to know what is involved and what is the process and at what point the breaking down took place so that you can ask them to reset and to fix and they can tell you where you are that we can pick up. And that is why we can't throw out these things and say, oh, those are old fashioned things. You don't need to know. Yes, you need to know all the algorithm. All right. Yes, you need to know all the algorithm. Because what we're saying is not just what comes on the surface of the calculator that is important. You also have to know how it is working, what it is involved, and what it's made up of. And that is why we can never get rid of teaching students the correct algorithm in terms of using mathematical processes. All right? So then we know if we have a zero in front of a number, that is not counted. So that could have just been written as 8.8 .8 over 11. And you're saying 11 into 8, you can't. You put your zero, you put a point, and then you're saying 11 into 88 will give you your 8. And that is your answer this time. All right, so that is what we're doing for that particular one. Now, I want you to think some more. So this time, yes, I am sending you to do this big one. Are you screaming at me? No, you're not screaming because you know your tables, you know what to do, how you can do it, all right? So I want you, in your own time, as we take our little break, to work this one for me, and then we are going to come back and see if what you did was correct. So you're going to be taking your break this time with this problem in mind, 4.618, and it is divided by 0 0.24. I'm writing it in that fashion today because I want you to see how we are moving our points, because once you can do that, we are home and dry, okay? So take your little break, and we'll be right back to finish off that section and then just to show you something else that usually gives our students a bit of a trouble throwing away a one point on the first question in the examination. So do take your break and we'll be right back to teach you some more.
feeling I do them, but I can hear other feeling I still do. I may not hear, but that does not and should not affect my ability to learn and to function in the real world. I am a gifted student. I need the opportunity to soar. Support me in my climb to higher levels of learning. Some of our children have special educational needs. They have a right to an education. So, let us teach them the way that they learn and help them to achieve their full potential. Be sure that you're working in the same units of measure when performing calculations. If a problem involves inches, feet, and yards, be sure to make the appropriate conversions so that all your values are in the same unit of measure. For example, change all values to feet. When asked to show work or justify your answer, don't be lazy. Write down everything about the problem, including the work you did on your calculator. Include diagrams, calculations, equations, and explanations written in complete sentences. Now is the time to show off what you really can do with this problem. Hello! You see how quickly we came back and you had to say, wait, but I didn't even get to the fridge. Right, because I just gave you a little time to work that, okay? Because our time, when you're having fun, time really goes quickly. But we have to fit in these things and to give you all the information. So you're going to tell me what was the first thing you had to do here to get that going. And what are you telling me? Yes, Auntie Karen, there are two decimal places that we... Is that true? Yes, because there are two digits here. We have tenths and we have hundredths. So we need to move the decimal pl point right over. Yes, okay, so it's two places, one, two. Okay, and what are we doing? In the numerator, we must do the same thing. Yes, so we're going one, two. Okay, so we're right here going over. Okay, so that our number now becomes four six one point eight and it is divided by 24. no i don't expect you to know your 24 types table but what we do we can look and see you have 24 and you say what number are we going to use which number are we going to go with and of course they're even numbers too so you can do your cancelling down and see what happens shall i leave that for you to do yes and then you're going to tell me if you got your answer. Because you bought your pads, you bought your pencils, and you're working with me. So this time, I am not going to help you. You're going to tell me. And notice that I'm putting it in my diary right here. So that the next time, or if you stop me on the street, I'm going to see if you're going to tell me the correct answer that you got for that. Because it was 461.8, and it is divided by 24. I just helped you in terms of saying how many things you had to use. So that is one of your, that's the homework that I'm giving you. And guess what? You're going to improve and make certain. Just sit and give yourself numbers and see that you can do what we just said. In terms of division, the divisor would tell us how many places we must move our decimal point that we are increasing or decreasing the number in order to get the di that divisor to be a whole number. And that then would put us in the realm where we have finished our decimals, okay? And what is going to happen tomorrow is that we'll be working some problems. 
because we are now right there. We are grown. Yes, we have grown and grown and grown that now you're going to see. When your um, student come home to you or your daughter or son comes and says, I don't understand what is meant by decimal place. You're going to say, oh, let granny show you. Oh, let mommy show you because I know how to do it. I saw it on Miss Weston's program. All right? So that is what we're doing. And we're going to make certain that you know that you can do mathematics. So I want you to continue to enjoy your evening. And again, we remember those family who may be grieving because of the death or the loss of a loved one. There's so many these days that we just have to say sincere sympathy to you. And just remember that our God is in control. Until tomorrow, we'll be right back to bring some more mathematics to you and to make certain that you know we are growing because we are powerful and we can do it. See you tomorrow. Join us next time for another in the series, Mastering Mathematics, a production of the Education Broadcasting Unit in the Ministry of Education and ABS-TV.